So question one is about parachuting. Very exciting. And unfortunately we've lost these pictures here due to copyright reasons, but I'm sure your imagination is fantastic enough that you can work this out. Pictures are usually only for context. Um, so a parachutist of mass 75 kilograms jumps from a plane at a height of 4,000 meters, that's 4 kilometers, above sea level. A. The parachutist falls through a distance of 2,400 meters during the first 60 seconds. Calculate the average speed of the parachutist during this time. Now, uh, as soon as they jump out of the plane, they're going to be accelerating, which means their speed is not going to be constant during the first period of time uh, while it's accelerating, clearly, because the acceleration is occurring. However, this is after that average speed. So we can um, find an average speed during that acceleration period. But anyway, acceleration, sorry, velocity, is uh, the average velocity is the total uh, change in distance over the total time that you're considering it across. And this will give us a, an approximation or um, a value which is, well, it's the average. Um, anyway, 2,400 meters SI units divided by 60 seconds. Uh, two zeros cancel, so 240 divided by 6, that gives us 40, and the units are already there for us, meters per second. Okay, so clearly it starts off at zero and ends up at a place higher than that, but that 40 meters per second is somewhere in the middle. B. Explain the vertical motion of the parachutist just after she jumps out of the plane, so before the parachute opens. Alright, uh, before we even get down to that, let's just look at it and see. They're obviously going to accelerate, so let's just write A to remind ourselves. Um, and we're explaining the motion. If there's an acceleration, we have to explain why there's an acceleration. So there's always a force. Remember from Newton's, uh, I always get the numbers mixed up. Second law, F equals MA. Um, whenever there's an acceleration, there's an unbalanced force causing that acceleration. So those, those two are things that we're going to talk about. Um, and there's going to be a point where the forces are balanced. So just after though, just after she jumps, means we don't have to consider the point um, where acceleration has been balanced out by air resistance and so that there is no more acceleration. So we'll, we'll go through and see what, what we say. As in your answer, you should A, or part here, draw a label and label the vertical forces acting on the parachute. See, we were talking about that even before we got there, but it's important. And show their relative sizes on the image to the right. Well, there's no image there, so we're just going to draw a person falling. They've got a parachute on their back, and uh, yeah. So there are two forces acting on them. What are they? Well, we know there's a force due to gravity acting downwards, and FG, you might like to label that uh, force due to gravity, and there is a force acting upwards, which would be the air resistance, and that's smaller. So when we're talking about relative sizes, we're going to write the force due to air resistance. Um, you can label it whatever you like, as long as it's clear. FA is probably not clear enough, so you should write maybe air resistance. Um, yeah, so FG is greater than FA while, while the person is, is accelerating. Next part, describe the net vertical force and state whether the forces are balanced or unbalanced. So the net vertical force is downwards, and their forces are unbalanced, which is what leads to the acceleration. So describing the vertical motion of the parachutist is acceleration due to that unbalanced force. And explain how the net vertical force affects the vertical motion. Well, because it's <laughs> we've, we're covering this over and over again, um, it's nice how they make it clear for you by following these steps, but um, really you shouldn't need that because you should be more uh, aware. This is definitely a, a high level question as well, or a question that has high level reaching answers to it. So anyway, explaining how the net vertical force affects the vertical motion. Net vertical force is unbalanced uh, downwards, so there is a positive downward uh, unbalanced force which leads to acceleration in that direction, um, and the larger the unbalanced force, the larger the acceleration, I guess. Um, moving on to the C, which is actually the last question in the section. After 60 seconds, the parachutist pulls the cord and opens her parachute. Explain how the parachute reduces the speed of the parachute when it is just open. In your answer, you should consider, you know what, I'm not even going to consider those things as yet. We're just going to start. Okay, and again, we've got no picture, but we're probably going to have to draw a picture, so I'm going to go straight into it. Here's our parachutist. There's their pack, but this time... 
their parachute has opened and uh, now there is a, a greater surface area um, for air resistance so the force due to air resistance is going to increase and uh, if we were to draw forces on our person that's going to be greater greater than our force due to gravity now so our, our FG is now less than force due to air resistance um, and that is provides an unbalanced force upwards which leads to an acceleration um, in, the, in, the, in that direction okay, that sounds a little bit strange but what that means is it's decelerating it or decelerating it or, or reducing the velocity in a downward direction um, which is what a parachute is supposed to do so uh, yeah and then after a period of time um, in this situation that uh, force due to air resistance upwards will equal the force due to gravity um, because the velocity of, of the person falling downwards, their, their vertical velocity, will, will reduce which means less air is pushing into the uh, uh, parachute which means the force upwards due to air resistance decreases and then it's now balanced and equal and opposite to the force due to gravity which means there's no more acceleration and they're moving down at a constant velocity. Run that through again if you're not sure. But, so anyway, let's go through the bullet points, make sure we've covered everything. How the motion of the parachute is changes when the parachute's open, we've covered that. They start decelerating because um, they um, have an unbalanced force um, in the opposite direction. The effect of the size of the parachute on the motion, we talked about the large parachute, um, or the larger the parachute, more air gets trapped, increasing this force due to air resistance. Um, if that force is too great, by the way, that'll hurt. That could snap a spine. And I'm sure that happened during the um, development of the parachute. Yeah, better not to have too big a parachute. Anyway, the effect of the parachute on the net vertical force, we talked about that, saying that it's upwards, unbalanced, uh, until the point where it reaches constant um, velocity. Okay, lots of fun.